The Lake Forest Podcast is supported by viewers, listeners, and businesses just like you. Looking for the best pool supplies? Look no further than Doheny's Pool Supplies. With a history dating back to 1967, this family-owned business offers everything families need to keep their pools clean and sparkling from chemicals to equipment. Plus, customers enjoy free shipping on all orders. Visit Doheny's Pool Supplies today at doheny.com, D-O-H-E-N-Y.com to learn more. Forest Bluff Real Estate Team serves Illinois, Wisconsin, Lake Forest, and Lake Bluff. John Josephitis, Laura Lee Van Fleet, and of course, Michelle Parnell. Get a free market analysis now at forestbluffrealestate.com. For the best cannabis in the world, look no further than Iliad Epic Grow. Owned by Lake Bluff's own Rich Ruzich, they are a cannabis cultivation center focusing on hard-to-find small batch products that will delight both the occasional user and Ganjier. When visiting Michigan, ask for it by name, Epic Products, exceptional process. For more information, email info at iliadgrow.com. Havy Communications has been helping first responders arrive safely since 1983. It's owned by Lake Forest owned Mike Havy. Check them out at havycommunications.com. Are you looking for beer, wings, and swings in Lake Forest? Well, check out Duffer's Pub and their state-of-the-art golf simulators. This primo setup is the perfect place for your next corporate event. Yes, let your boss win. And of course, all the games will be on the TV and you'll never go hungry because the za and wings are scrumptious. Go to Duffer's Pub on Western Avenue now. We'd also like to say we're thankful for our Patreon supporters. Otto, John, C, and Helen. Water. Yeah, they were afraid that uh, you'd, you'd bring That's in a like, water bottle. Of I course nobody was there. It's the last weekend before summer summer right. ends, so nobody's in town. Maybe we need to get a list of all the events in town, and the week before each event, we do a show with the people from that event to help promote it. I don't know. Yeah. This was a, it was a great concert. I mean, Rick almost did a great job when we had him on. Uh, I, I'm going to give Rick the new... He walks around those, fa- those events. I mean, he's checking to make sure the beer taps are working. He's going over to the food trucks, making sure... Of course sure he there. is, because they lose their ass. Lake Forest needs a, a special events director. I put a post out today yes. about it. Because yeah. they have to... for you. You should come, be the czar of fun. <laughs> Lake the Bluff fun can do this. Czar. Lake Bluff does these parties all the time. They are hugely attended. They have, I mean, here let's, a, let's a start there. Lake Bluff so, block party is twice the attendance of this uh, of that music festival. Rick, Rick and Joe, did you guys go to that music festival? I saw a bunch of pictures. Joe, did you go? That's what we're talking yes, about. Yeah, my yeah, wife yeah, and we, I went. We were both there. Yeah, and uh, Rick met uh, Rick and his lovely wife. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. yep. So yeah, great, great concert. I mean, uh, I got all well, my music 80s. was fun. I did, I I did it was a white insane. snake dance with uh, uh, Alderman Preslack in the crowd. It was great. Uh, <laughs> yeah. My boys, yeah, High and will, Fidelity, just, were rocking it out, headlining. Here I go back on the road again. <laughs> but I, I think a lot of us <laughs> were, were, were kind of disappointed. Though in the in the attendance, it just yeah, uh, I mean, it wasn't yeah, dreadful, I, but it wasn't good either. Well, it's when when was good. it good? I mean, it was there was a lot of space. I know, but when was it busy? It, it wasn't it got later. No, I mean, oh, in the history of the music festival. Oh, I, oh no, it, it, I'm the newcomer. It was my first one. It. It's, it's only this is only the second or third. I think this is the third one they've done, and the two previous ones they did have rain I- I- issues. Uh, this one was no rain, no weather issues at all. Yeah, uh, and yet it still had a a, a, a disappointing uh, crowd. I think. Do you think we need somebody to uh, be the czar of special events to like r- take everything into account and then dole up the money? Because yeah, Jeff Urso. <laughs> <laughs> we get some really good pizza. He at knows these, at these events. Uh. Well, he he knows how to scale things, but music's a different animal, man. Because you're dealing. Well, with... You'd be the music director, and we yeah, have you can be, class, the be the lead right. uh, actor. No, it's easier being be, being a podcaster. Trust me. Pointing the finger is. <laughs> when Heart of Glass going to play something in Lake Forest? <laughs> we'll see. You know. Yeah, the, 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 that looks like an interesting. <laughs> show. That if, if like they can afford it, but <laughs> but no, we have we have all these events that are. Anybody looks like Deborah and, Harry uh, sings. I'm you know I'm I'm there. <laughs> Well, no, Lake Forest has all these events, and they're all they're all fragmented. Where 
you have the Legion does this, you have the uh, Friends of Park and Rec does that. Uh, shouldn't you centralize it uh, to have one person? I'm sure I'm going to make a lot of people happy on well, this. Well, but- here's the challenge, because I've seen this in other communities over the years, yeah. too, is you don't want the city to be, look like it's trying to take, because this is the foundation and there's all these different mm-hmm. groups. That's their that's their wheelhouse. This is their thing. To, you say foundation, Friends Foundation? Yeah, the, this is the Parks The Parks and Rec Foundation. foundation. Yeah, hold on, rec hold on. Foundation, which, you, is great, which is great. I, I mean, they've done a lot of great stuff. No, it's not a they great do several idea because... Of these, yeah, they, do, they do the tree lighting, they do this music festival, and don't they do the 4th of July also? Yeah, yeah they do the fireworks. I'm, I'm not saying they're not doing a good job, guys. What I'm saying is the reason why it exists is because there, there wasn't a budget for Parks and Rec. So if you make a budget for Parks and Rec with the city... Then you don't need the friends, and then and you, you got to raise taxes. Says who? Well, you make a buck. I would money. rather they have these concerts to pay for things than raise my taxes. What are you talking you about? Do. The concerts lose money, and they go to the taxpayers no, to no. say it. that's and what happens. Someone to you need someone to, well, someone to work with them to help them so they make money, right? I don't know that they lost money. I just don't think they made very much. If they well, made maybe we should every time there's an event like this, we need to do a podcast the week before the when the when the, the day before. To help promote it, but we've look, done it today. Every before. dollar they raise at these things is the dollar we don't have to have in taxes. So let's try to get uh, get them making money. Yeah, and I will say, you know, the the Chamber of Commerce used to be the sponsor of the um, of, of the tree lighting ceremony, uh, in particular. And I, I unfortunately, the chamber has I think become less relevant. Um, you know, it may be one of the things that the Friends of Parks and Rec could do is. Uh, try uh, building alliances with other organizations what? so that several organizations would would turn out for this. Why do you need a friends of park and rec? That's what I don't get. Joe, what are you talking about is cost? You ta- it's, mm-hmm. you don't mean cost, you mean risk. Somebody's got to take on the risk to put on an event, right? Yeah. No, I think, you know, uh, you had a great show last week with Jeff Urso. And Jeff had a lot of interesting ideas out there. I hope that... Um, you know, like I said, you've got all these different groups out there. So you got everybody's got their little turf and stuff. But I'm hoping maybe somebody silo. It's called a silo. Silo. That's a good way of putting it. And when you I'm have silo, you don't maybe, have Joe, you, you don't you don't have economies of scale in a silo. Well, you you brought Jewel and the city together to get us a card correct. So maybe you now that we're gonna you're gonna graduate, but um while you're still working on peace in the Middle East, you can work on getting these events all together and maybe get some better coordination and better promotion. It, get get left bank hot dogs there instead of some Nathan's hot dogs from some uh, town in McHenry County. Yeah, I mean, if we got the left bank hot dogs, that would be better. But, that would be much better. Yeah. yeah. As so, easy it was to get a, a, a shopping cart corral at Jewel, it's as easy to coordinate what's going on here. You're the man to do it, in my opinion. Oh, okay, thanks. You're because you're a uniter, not a divider. <laughs> Depends who you ask. So, <laughs> yeah, what, I, I've heard, I've heard differently. Yes. Look, look, you I've, to, I've heard about me. You, 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 you pay somebody full in a hundred grand to manage all this stuff and <laughs> keep, the, keep the money in house. You have economies of scale. You keep the the risk goes down because. So, so many advantages of this. And then, you know what? We'll buy the basketballs for the rec center. Just let, let it go. Okay. Yeah, you want to go to the, uh, to the question of the, um, uh, of the beggars and the vagrants? Yeah, let's go on to that. Uh, why are there uh, so many homeless uh, in town that we can't get rid of? Well, I think our guest, Mary Cole, kind of alluded to some of the – I mean, that there is a uh, – there's some of them, not all of them are, you know, there's a, there is a crime issue with some, but there's, you know, look, the economy is, is what it is. There's a mental health issue out there. Um, and I think groups like the ACLU um, have made it more difficult. You, it's, it's harder for police to come in and remove uh, homeless people than it used to be. But I, I had, when you posted that picture on on Facebook, that's I, on I, Oakwood I, and Oakwood and what, Rick? Um, Oakwood and Wisconsin. Okay, okay. So on, I had an off the record conversation with one of the aldermen. There's no signs there. 
and they believe me they they want to deal with this um they get a lot of calls they don't oh, like I'm it. glad i hope they agree. um I but say, no, their no, hands just pissed but me there's off only so much legally they can do and you know a lot of the same people well but that you know maybe maybe, maybe it's time people somebody started cry. being a little more aggressive and 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 being a little more inventive in what they're doing you know you've seen me uh, post before uh, the signs that I see out in Phoenix and Scottsdale uh, saying, do not give money to panhandlers. Uh, if you want to contribute to the homeless, here is a place you could do that. Uh, and yet I see no effort whatsoever to get the beggar off, uh, beggars off of Western Avenue uh, or to get this new vagrant who's now living uh, on city property. Uh, at the parking lot. Why can't that uh, person be taken off city property? I don't know. I don't know why he can't be. Well, he you're the lawyer. Be. He's loitering. He's not only loitering. He's also he. I heard he, there's he, no sign there. That is that is a trespass. I think there's some discussion about some of the options they can do. So I um, they um, have. I know, like the Skokie parks have a curfew. So there, there's if you go to any park in yeah. Skokie, there's a curfew of all, all, a, all parks have a curfew. All parks have a curfew. All the ones so there there could be a curfew on public property. I mean, yeah. like I said, the you, unfortunately groups like the ACLU, which I think a lot of those same flat Earth Society people that we've talked about over over the last few months, I think are very you know I, there are people out there. Like, when you did the Facebook post, there were people saying, "Oh, Pete, you need to be more sensitive to this." And you need. I to, go, yeah. Why don't you uh, put them up at your house? <laughs> but yeah. there are look, there are there are places for the homeless. Lake County Paths is. is a great yes. organization. Okay, yes. they do a lot of good work, and anyone can volunteer there. We've done volunteering with with them through our church. Um, there's there's a whole bunch of ways. What you don't want to do, and we, we've talked about this on a previous show, you don't want to just hand them money because I've seen this going to, I've been working or going to school in Chicago for over 30 years. So, you know, I'm used to homeless people downtown Chicago and and, and by Loyola and Rogers Park. You you don't want to just hand them money because they say it's for something to eat, but then it ends up being yeah, for no. uh, drugs yeah, or liquor. If, I, if, if, if somebody sees me on the street and I pass passage by, they wish me a nice day. They're wishing me a nice day. Uh, when the beggar in front of Fresh Market says to me, have a nice day, he's asking me for money. Yeah. It don't is, give them the money because you're feeding the problem. There is credibility in these people. Now, now hold on. There's I a do guy, not understand why brought, we let oh, this hold guy. Hold on, Rick. You brought up Fresh Market. He's sitting that, there. The, the guy is sitting today right in front of a help wanted sign. Well, I mean, there, the Fresh Market has a help wanted sign right next to him. Hold on, Rick. Let me stir you up a little bit more. Yeah, that dude I, at Fresh I, Market, he's got a nice house. He's got a couple cars. We've talked about that dude two or three times on this show when you guys weren't around, and he's still there. Because yeah. people give him money. That's why, yeah, I exactly. go out That's there. why he's there. If people didn't give him money, if people, people stopped there. giving him money, he'd stop being there. He's yeah. getting more money in this podcast. That's bull crap. I bet he is. I'm, I'm going to sure. sit I, out I, there I'm with a sign. confident he is. I know. I've talked to some of the all. Hey, what's the, what's the quote from uh, yeah, Michael Jordan? It. Or suppose Charles Barkley and Michael Jordan were supposedly walking uh, down the street one day many years ago. Yeah. And uh, a homeless guy went up to them. Uh, I don't know if he knew who Michael Jordan was, but um, and asked him for money. And he basically said something to the effect of, "You can easily say welcome to McDonald's as you can. Can you give me some money?" I mean, there's, yeah. you can find it online that quote um, on there, but I mean, it's uh, it's weird. true. I mean, like, the the unemployment rate is three point six percent. It is like Walmart is low. begging for employees. Yeah. Every retailer is begging for employees, and I get it. Maybe not, there's there are mental health issues with certain people, and we do need to. But there's there's that certain the biggest, there's paths, that is, there's that things that like the, that. That is the biggest a number one fraud of this whole thing, in my view is the mental health, mental health aspect of it. Yeah. Mentally, ment people with mental health challenges have been working for a living since work was created. Absolutely, absolutely. But uh, my point is there's resources available for whether it's a mental health problem or a fine, look, there are people that have serious financial problems, lost their homes and stuff like that. I get that. There's places for that. It's not handing them cash on the street. Right. You guys are missing the boat. These people that are giving giving them cash are doing it because they feel guilty. 
Well, this is the same. Is it the same? It's the flat Earth Society. I think it makes the donors feel better for whatever reason. I never understand why. I bet they all voted for Eric Reinhardt for state's attorney. (laughs) Yeah, I bet you. I bet you. There's a correlation. I feel bad for letting criminals go. Here you go. Here's five dollars. Do you think we're ever going to get Reinhardt on the podcast now? (laughs) Mr. Reinhardt, you're welcome to come on and tell us. Yeah, yeah, like fries with that, Eric. And Eric's not a, Eric's a nice guy, by the way. Personally, he's very I'm sure nice. Sure, he is. Guys. That's a really bad idea. idea. Anybody that's letting out criminals that's going to rip me off, he ain't so nice. <laughs> uh, so, so guys, we missed you for the last. As long as you don't give any money to the beggar, I'm okay. <laughs> well, let's see. Hopefully, let's move that guy in front of uh, Prue Bidler's house. Uh, yeah, that'd be fine. I at least some get you know get these guys <laughs> out of there. I, and, and, hey, you know, I don't think it's that, a, I don't think it's a coincidence that the beggar is there and the beggar is making a living there on that corner famously. And all of a sudden, now we got vagrants just sleeping yeah. literally in the woods. Hey, Turkle, you should interview that guy. We never had that before. Get him on the uh, NPR Lake Forest. <laughs> He'll, fall asleep. he'll he'll get a nice he'll get a nice rest listening to their. Uh, I did see, by so, the way, an interesting approach that one store did, uh, not in Lake Forest, uh, that they started playing classical music outside of their store, such that the beggar had to listen to the classical music and the beggar left. Huh. I like classical music. <laughs> and you don't like the beggar. I was in the band and orchestra in high school, so I, okay, but I get it, I get it. Yeah, what'd you play? <laughs> what'd you play? I'm going to bet it's the oboe. Hold on. What'd you play? Me? Yeah. I played saxophone. I haven't touched it since 1987. All right, Clint. nice. And I, most playing. of my friends, I'll, I'll find some yearbook pictures. I was in the band, but we did like a joint thing with the orchestra uh, and stuff. But I, I, the, the, I literally set the instrument down at high school graduation and Never touched it after that. All right. Speaking of instruments, Joe, wasn't it like National Radio Day? Do you have something you want to talk about? Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, everybody everybody knows me for being the political guy. Um, and yeah, I, all that. But when I was in, well, actually, going when I was in high school, I was like the one of the PA announcers, kind of like our friend oh. Scoop. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, um, I was one of the voices of Niles North, like on the PA. But um, but then in college, I actually um, was at the Loyola radio station. I went to Loyola University, downtown Chicago in Rogers Park, and they have a radio station still there, 88.7 FM, WLUW. It's a little very different now than when I was there. It's very like it's like socialist radio now. But um, back then we actually um, were like a pop station, played pop music, um, actually registered on the ratings a little bit in the Nielsen book. Um, and I did, I ended up co-hosting the morning show. We actually tried to be like a regular radio station. I was co-hosting the morning. It started out as the news guy, news director, but then I ended up co-hosting the, um, the morning show with a guy named Ed Varga who lives in Lake County. And I'm still in touch with a great guy. Um, but, and, at the same time, down the dial on B96 was Eddie and Jobo. So it was Ed and Joe and Eddie and Jobo. Our call letters were WLUW and down the street on Michigan Avenue. And our address was on Michigan Avenue. So down the street was WLUP, John and Jonathan Brandmeier, all that stuff, the loop back then. Yeah. Um, so we actually had like decent, decent ratings for we were probably the most listened to college radio station in the country. <laughs> At that point, because and we got big, we were. got big guests. <laughs> we got we got Tears for Fears, Donny Osmond. Whoa! Um, we had local politicians um, on. We interviewed Mayor Daly um, at some point. We had, um, but the 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 one that I kind of recently, my friend Ed found the tape and posted it online, and I think I shared it here on our Facebook page recently for National Radio Day. We interviewed Pat Sajak in 1989. And Pat's, Pat is back in the news because he's retiring after all these years with Wheel of Fortune. And But people forget this. Back in 1989, CBS didn't have uh, – David Letterman hadn't gone yet to CBS. So CBS was desperately trying to have a late-night show that could compete with the Johnny Carson show on NBC. 
And so they hired, they created, it was the Pat Sajak show. And he hosted this for like a year. It went nowhere, ended up getting canceled. And he rightfully stayed with Wheel of Fortune. Um, but nobody, for, nobody could compete with Johnny Carson. Right, right. And, um, but he, it, Sajak was from Chicago. So good, every, good he, every agreed, man he agreed to do an interview over the phone from his swimming pool in Hollywood at his house. So he's talking to us on the phone, promoting this at that time, new show called the Pat Sajak show that was trying to compete with the Johnny Carson show. And in the interview, he says, I'm not sure if I'm going to stay on Wheel of Fortune or not. We'll see how it goes. Well, we know how it went. Um, he did stay for like, you know, 35 more years. Now he's finally retiring, getting replaced by Ryan Seacrest. But great interview. Miss Pat Sajak, really super nice guy on the phone. But I have the same problem I have now where I don't know if it's my hearing. And that's why I try to wear these ear pods. But I... I Interrupted him, and the two people I was hosting the show. Wait, were like, what? You interrupted finish. somebody? I interrupted Patsy, <laughs> but I couldn't see him. He was on the phone, and I, you know, like, I, I think I need to see an ear doctor at some point. But I don't know. You said a timing doctor. <laughs> well, I need to see a lot of doctors, but that's a that's another show. But wow, yeah, that was great. On radio like- is great, and I, I, I kind of feel like I'm back. You know, the broadcasting voice and everything is back, and. uh Having fun with it. It's it's great. And, that, and I love radio. I listen all the time to, you know, WGN, WLSAM, w, News Radio, BBM, all those. I like news talk. Um, yeah. I even listen occasionally to NPR. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, so everybody's got to get to sleep. Well, yeah. I like the budget that you had on your cassette tape there. Uh, that was Ed. <laughs> he He's like, hey, you know. He's like starts the interview and he's like, geez, we better record it. And so he grabs the first cassette. And this is 1989. He grabs the first cassette he can find. It's like some um, capital steps recording that they used to they used to mail promo tapes mm-hmm. to radio stations. I think it was like the capital steps. Yeah. So he sticks it in a tape recorder. So you, you had so, to cover the tab so it would record. Yeah. I hope he covered the tab. Right. We got, exactly. we, Otherwise, we got the recording. So Ed. Ed Ed knew what he was doing. Maybe we'll have Ed as a guest one time. He can talk all about oh, absolutely. Year old baby. Oh. Um, he was at my son's graduation party, not at the same time you were there, but oh. a great guy uh, living living not far from here in uh, Richmond in McHenry County. So um, well, he reached the Lake what, County, McHenry County scanner too. We, so. <laughs> we, we definitely got to get him on here. So you guys had two weeks off. We had uh, Jeff first, so I forgot what the other show was that we had. We had two guys with whose last yes, names uh, ended with Joe the Se- letter O. One was Joe Severino. Hey, 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 hey. Um, <laughs> you know, look, Urso. What, what is a rhino? Oh, I, I, the well, other one, the other Severino, uh, you know. I know what a rhino is supposed to be. What okay. What is it? Because I asked him. Can I give my two cents on Mr. It's, Severino? It's, yeah, it's please, because I got a half right. ass. Between the, the two of you, that's an ass and a half. All right. So I have voted in every election since I turned 18. Yeah. I have voted straight Republican in every election since I turned 18. Yeah. So last last fall, I voted for Mr. Severino. Held my note. I knew he was gonna win, but I still voted for him. Yeah. And if he if he's a Republican nominee again, I'll vote for him. But it, it's not my vote that matters. It's those swing voters that we talked to, we've talked about this a lot, where the same day. Joe Biden won Lake Forest and Lake County by a landslide. The the no referendum, the vote no against the J.B. Pritzker tax hike um, lost by a landslide. So it's that swing voter that, that yes. is essentially let me, let me, let me, can, can I fiscal conservative, words, social uh, moderate. Pete's question. Joe does not fit that. Yeah, um, me, but also me, me answer Pete's question though. Uh, you know, got some I, serious I, I, background. I, I to work here eventually, guys. Uh, sorry. <laughs> you two are the masters of timing. Go ahead, Rick. Uh, yeah, I, it, let me. Uh, I'm sorry. I got to get back to work here eventually. You want to know what a rhino is? Yeah. What uh, rhino stands for? Republican in name only, and what it means is ah. someone who um, uh, identifies as a Republican but is pro-choice on the abortion issue, uh, and is not uh, a, a Trumper. Uh, that is what a that's what a rhino. Well, the rhino, the the word you go back to. They were using the word rhino back in the '60s with Nixon. The, the the Goldwater people were calling the Nixon people rhinos, and 
and all that. So it's not Trump they era. Weren't, they weren't conservative. They weren't conservative. But let me enough. let me address that because he attacked every Republican that's ever won an election in Lake County on your show, basically, which is Mark Kirk and Bob Dole. He called them rhinos and all that. And he said there was no difference between them and uh, Brad Schneider. That's false. Yeah. Um, Brad, yes, on social issues, you're correct. So both of them favor legalized abortion. That's that's correct. But um, Mark Kirk and Bob Dole voted a, opposed, o- voted against Obamacare, whereas Brad Schneider supported it. Um, Mark Kirk and Bob Dole voted for every Republican tax cut and voted against every Democratic tax hike that Brad Schneider has supported. So there. On the on the issues that matter, and I bet you and on criminal justice, I, I don't know exactly where Mr. Schneider is, but I suspect if he came out um, uh, against the oh, Safety Act, he'd get. Rick, primed. Rick, you I said know. Schneider was coming on, right? I'd love um, to have Brad he Schneider. He said he on would. And, yeah, I'm not. I was on my him. last breath on that death march called the Lake Forest Parade, <laughs> and I heard him say he was going to do it because he did. Let's uh, have him on. I I, I love well, well, here's 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 a, here's where I'm going with several. I'll, con- okay. I'll contact him. I'm gonna get to- well, my point is maybe he's listening or watching or neither. Uh, I had Joe on three times. The first two times never did anything, and then the third time he said, "Hey man, I got this FOIA stuff on Brad Schneider, and he's talking prostitutes and all this stuff." I'm like, "Whoa, whoa, 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 whoa! You got to share this stuff with me." Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I'll share it with you. Doesn't exist. Bupkis. Nothing. Doesn't so, and, and then he when when you call him on it, he says he says two a couple of things that he said to other people. He has he says something to the effect of, well, you must really support Brad Schneider, or you must think prostitution is okay. I've never voted okay. for Brad Schneider, and I never will. Nothing personal against him, but I'm not I I don't yeah, not a bad I, guy. I vote for him. Not and I, I wouldn't and believe me, every Republican political operative like me would love nothing more. Than to take down a, a Democratic yeah, yeah. member of Congress. So, so my point is, I who, went out to Chris because Chris they were Rice. arrested for prostitution. But you can't make crap up. You can't say someone was arrested for prostitution Joe, unless Joe you can prove does. they've been arrested for prostitution. And he has zero proof of it. And he's the stuff he's saying is like QAnon, like conspiracy. I don't even know what QAnon is. All I know is I reached out to Chris Fry at Deerfield, and I said, "Hey, man, is there anything here?" He gave me everything. I'm looking at it, and it's <laughs> that was up I, kiss. Saw, I saw what you had. Yeah, yeah I nothing. mean, this is just it's it's, it's like the Pizza Gate stuff. Oh, mm-hmm. I mean, come on, think about it for a minute. Have you ever met Brad Schneider? I mean, the last he's going to hire a prostitute seriously. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> he wouldn't know how to hire. I wouldn't know how to do it. I'm sure he wouldn't know how to. Do it. it didn't happen on. though. It didn't happen. Of there course would not. Be, there would be. Do you and. and do you re- like we've talked? Most cops are Republicans, all right. So if 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 I guarantee you, if a Democratic congressman got arrested oh. for prostitution, there would be one, at least one cop in the Deerfield Police Department that would Lots come forward them. with the proof of this. It's yeah. not happening because it Rhino happen. goes up to Schneider at his little uh, speech and he's hold- waving this piece of paper. Yes. Schneider yes. should have said, "Yeah, let me read that." Bupkis. <laughs> Yeah, and then yeah. he's he's co-hosting or he was co-hosting a radio show. I don't know if they still are now or not. With a guy who said something. W L U W. Yeah, <laughs> it's better than W G B O. It's a it's one of those paid shows. So you basically put a quarter. Anybody, in. Like you could get the show on there if you pay the radio station a certain amount of money to be on. Is my understanding, but um, it was the Pat and Wally show, and Wally just kind of sat there sleeping. Uh, so Wally's out, and now it's the Pat and Joe show, or the Revelators, or whatever. Well, and I'm not sure if it's still on because now their their YouTube videos are gone. So maybe they. But the the, the Pat guy, there's some questionable stuff about him, about a, a supposedly a stalking charge, and then he he did make a comment online, basically saying that. Uh, George W. Bush. Bye, go, Rick. This has been fun. So, look, I don't have anything against Mr. Severino personally, um, but I and and let's be let's be very honest with ourselves. Whoever the Republican nominee is against Brad Schneider in who's a presidential be? cycle is probably going to lose. Okay, I, I hope between I'm wrong. Between us, girls, who's going to who's going to who's going to be? Uh, you know, I've I've heard the name. Uh, 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 
Karis. Uh, I can't remember his last. Not 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 the Karis. Not Karis. Not no, not those Karis. It's okay. spelled God right. dang. Uh, not the not the one that hit her cell phone when she was an alderman. Um, but uh, the um, or the one uh, the, whose husband wrote the letter about school. Uh, they all wrote. But this, it's a different, no relation. I think it's spelled yeah. differently to be okay. inference, but they're from Lake Forest. I, and if he declares, look, and the, the filing for these offices isn't until December. Uh, it's like, it, it's, a, it's a week-long filing period. So it's like last week in November, first week in December. We'll know who the candidates are. Yeah. We'll be more than happy to have anyone on. Like Congressman Schneider is welcome to come on. If anybody else files for state's attorney. Well, Schneider comes we'll on. What on. are we going to say to him? I, I got a lot of questions. I'd like to know why. How do you represent Lake Forest and want to tax wealthy people, or at least your party does? Um, you know, they can I, get money. Well, I mean, like I said, I, I think you know Schneider is not part of the AOC wing of the Democratic Party. He's more of a quote unquote moderate, but he is. But there wasn't. But like he voted, he supports Obamacare. He support he supported he opposed Republican tax cuts. Um, he supported um, Joe Biden's tax proposals that you know Biden would have raised taxes had it not been for Joe Manchin killing it in the Senate. There's a lot of things that that there yes there uh, there is a difference between Brad Schneider Brad Schneider and moderate Republicans in the tradition of Mark Kirk and Bob Dole, neither of whom are going to run again. Let's. That was that was that was kind of brought up on your show. Um, they're neither one of those guys. They're done. They've done their service. Poor Mark um, suffered a, hor- a, a, a very de- dehabilitating stroke. He's still recovering from it. I saw him at a church event recently. I'd love to get him on the show because he's got. A lot I of don't know things. him. I know the Dolds. Good people. And- yeah, they're good people, and they're just look. They they want, but they they won elections here. All right, we're getting to the point now where we're you know. Severino got the same percentage of the vote in the congressional election last year that Prue Beidler did in the mayoral election. And we all no, know that Prue but- lost by a lance. But then I point the finger at you and Rick. I'm like, that's the best you guys can do? Here's the challenge. Like I said, I no matter who the candidate is, it could be the, it could be the second coming of Ronald Reagan. Yeah. They're going to have an uphill battle the way the 10th is drawn now. And also let's just, let's not kid ourselves. I mean, if you got Trump at the top of the ticket, um, it, 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 he can win elsewhere. And the whole, I I often use this analogy of Walmart. Okay. Um, So if you go into a Walmart in, um, so Bears fans and Packers fans hate each other, right? We hate the Packers. They hate the Bears. If I go into a Walmart around here, I find Bears jerseys, Bears cats, Bears T-shirts. If I go into a Walmart in Green Bay, Wisconsin, or anywhere north of the, the state line, yeah. I find all Packers stuff, right? So there are places that Republicans have done better running socially conservative. Pro-life, like Southern Illinois went from Democrat to Republican in the last 20 years because they started running pro-life Republicans down there. And they like and- guns. And winning, yeah, and guns and a whole bunch of things. And so, but the reverse happened here in, in the Chicago area. And Lake Forest is a great example. I mean, Lake Forest used to be solidly Republican, but that was when we ran the Kirk Dold type Republicans. And and now it's I, like- You know what I think, I mean, Joe? It, it reminds you, talk about the, you use the word outliers a lot, Pete. And we, you know, we've got a lot of outliers in both parties, um, but it seems to be, unfortunately, right now my party- has more of the outliers than the other party. Now, I, at least around here, um, I mean, let's let's look at it. Uh, a, Joe, to me, it's it's the same problem that the caucus is having. But the you caucus know? ran a guy for mayor who appealed to people from both parties. Randy Tack. Got I'm not ranked. talking about mayor. I'm talking about everything else because they don't have enough good people to choose from. Well, you know, if you don't have enough good people to choose from, you get Joe Severino, you have no choice. Yeah. I mean, the party, the party regret. I've talked to a lot of people who were involved. They had had two very bad candidates before Severino who really didn't do great and caused a lot of problems. So, you know, like, as you said on the show with him, he comes when you first meet him, he he looks great. I mean, he dresses nicely. Yeah. Um, you know, muscle guy, uh, boxer, those are all good things. Um, and the, you know, chicks the, dig them. 
yeah, you know, and, and stuff like that. Um, but after a while, as you have now seen, there's some underlying issues. I mean, it's public, it's public record that he had a bankruptcy filing, and in the bankruptcy filing, it, it reported uh, liens to these to uh, the IRS and the Illinois Department of Revenue about total of like three hundred ninety thousand dollars in back taxes. So if that's true, and he Trump's he had a bunch it, of bankruptcies, so he owes, he owes he owes that. I mean, there's 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 these crazy conspiracy theories. There's some other questions raised about um, the legitimacy of, of of his resume and stuff. I don't want you know, like I don't want to give him more airtime than, than there's no airtime. I'm just saying. I, I think look, I think the Repo look if he's the nominee, I'll vote for him because. But my like I said, my vote doesn't matter. My fear is though somebody like Mary Cole, who has a l real good shot at beating. Uh, Eric Reinhardt is going to get brought down because then she's going to be forced to say, do you support, what do you think of this Severino who's been filed for bankruptcy I, I, and all these other things? I think and, she's and, got to stand her own, on her own. She's pedestal. running for prosecutor. It's totally separate than somebody running for Congress. But, but you know, congressional races are high profile. She's yes. got a lot of, she has a lot of Holly Kim to her, I think. Yeah, I think there's a lot of, of of similarities. And Holly Kim, you know, started out as a volunteer for Dole, but she just she saw the path, you know. But like I said, I, I don't think there's a Republican way or a Democratic way to run the county treasurer's office. I I, think I just want a good person. You know, I want a good guy, good gal. Rich Daly, Rich Daly threw away as many criminals as, as a Republican prosecutor did when he was the Cook County State's attorney. I mean, um, like Again, I said, the, that was part of the system. That but was the will. But, but I was a Democrat back. But then. the FOP respected Rich Daly when he yeah. was the state attorney. They have zero respect for Kim Fox. And I, yeah, she's not running again. Not, the police are not here to create disorder. They're here to preserve disorder. Well, that's the first Rich Daly. I'm talking about <laughs> Richie M. Daly um, when he was the state's attorney. Well, the but, apple doesn't fall that far from no, that. no, no. But I'm just saying, I don't think this is partisan. Uh, the Will County state's attorney is a Democrat. And he is as tough on crime as any Republican. I think if people don't pay attention and look into things and hear people talk, then it, it is a partisan thing because you don't know anything else. It shouldn't be, though. Right. It really shouldn't. Partisanship should be, you know, yes, Congress should be a partisan office because even the, despite the moderation of both Schneider and Kirk and Dole, there is a difference still between a moderate Democrat and a moderate Republican when it comes to the issues that matter most, which I think are taxes. Um, and, and economics that I would rather have Bob Dold voting on bills in Congress than Brad Schneider. But there, but state's attorney, I don't care if they're a Republican or a Democrat. I want them throwing the bad yeah. guys in jail. I want them, and, and the cops don't feel that this guy has their back. We need we need some coppers on to talk about that. Yeah. So I think it comes down to a couple things. It's got to be people like us that comes out here and puts this stuff out in the forefront. And number one, tell the truth have integrity. Number two, don't be boring. Okay. So here's what's going on out there. Hopefully we entertained you. This is, <laughs> if you want people thrown in jail, vote for Mary. If you want to, you know, cross your criminals thrown in jail, criminals, <laughs> criminals. Yeah. If, if you want to cross your fingers and leave your car and parked in your, in your uh, driveway, vote for Reinhardt. Go ahead. And I'd love to have Mr. Reinhardt on the show to explain his side of it, because maybe uh, he's got an explanation we're missing. Well, I'd like to have Reinhardt. Be nice to him. Schneider said he would come on. I'd like to have him come yeah, on. Yeah, Brad Schneider. And he, look, I think we've made it clear. We'll have, if you're running for office, <laughs> we've set the bar pretty low by having <laughs> Severino and, and, and the third mayoral candidate on us. <laughs> no, but, no, 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 um, no. He's a nice Anybody guy. Anybody that's running will come out. He's a nice guy. I don't want Everybody to... will get a fair shake till I yeah. have something. And Joe, Hear him out. I, I mean, that's Joe, that FOIA thing, you steered me wrong. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, S S Joe Severino did. Severino, I mean. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like I said, I, I just think I, I think the look, no matter who we nominate, it's gonna have a very uphill battle. I hope they would look if, if Joe Severino can win the primary and then win the general election, he can go from thirty six or thirty eight percent, whatever he had last time, to fifty one percent. I'll buy him a steak dinner at Sophia's. Not happening. So, you know, but and I'll vote for him if he's the nominee. All right. But like I said, it it's not my vote that matters. It's those swing voters. But if if Schneider come on, 
like I said, I would vote for Holly Kim. I would vote for Vince Vega. And I like to hear Schneider because I've heard all the bad stuff and I've not heard all the good stuff. And I like him to come on and he'd probably swing me too because all we'd have to do is just not lie to me. <laughs> That's the I bar think, that I said. Yeah, I think, you know, I think he's, I, I give him credit that he has stood up somewhat to some of the um, uh, outliers in his party. You know, he obviously represents a very large Jewish community and some of the AOC type uh, Democrats. I mean, one of them, when they, when they took office in Congress, like erased Israel from the map on the wall. That's ridiculous. And, and Brad Schneider, to his credit on that, stood up. Now, he did. He still supported the Iran deal, and I'm not, I question that. I'm not that smart to understand either. But that's, that, that's big global issues. But here, I would like to, for, since this is the Lake Forest podcast, yeah. um, and there's, let's be honest, most, there, most people have some decent amount of wealth in Lake Forest or make money in Lake Forest. Why is it that the Democratic Party feels they have to have a war on wealthy people by let's tax the rich. Every every Democratic candidate for president runs on tax the rich. Tax Great the marketing. Rich. But when you look Brand, at the numbers, when you branded, look at the numbers, doesn't yeah, happen. but they don't they don't fly in Lake Forest. So why explain yourself in, in, in to why you think people in Lake Forest should be paying a higher percentage of their income taxes. I, I, I'm a flat tax guy. I think no. it should be one flat tax with a few basic deductions. Yeah, keep it simple. Screw the IRS and get rid of them. But, but look, I, I just, this whole, and here's what happens is they, after they raise the tax on the wealthy and they realize they don't get enough revenue from the tax on the wealthy, then the second term, they raise yeah, the tax on the middle the little class. guy. Obama, Obama was the, was classic. And President Obama said repeatedly, I will never raise taxes on the middle class. Well, and sure. what happens? He gets elected to his second term. And what does he do? He cuts a deal with Mitch McConnell and Paul Ryan. And they, 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 they politicians did, lie. They did it. And that's what created Leave Trump. my lips, Joe. But that's what created lie. the Trump phenomenon more than anything else, I think, was a lot of people were pissed off that Paul Ryan and Mitch McConnell cut this deal with Obama to raise taxes um, uh, after the 2014 election. And I guarantee you, if Joe Biden is, is reelected and if he stays in office or if he then hands over the office to, to Kamala Harris because he, he don't look in good shape, unfortunately, um, I guarantee you in his second term, there will be a tax increase on the middle class because there is no way they can keep spending all this money. Right. You could rate, you could tax the rich at a hundred percent and it's still not enough to can't pay make the, you can't all make the, the stuff they want to do. But, but that's the issue we as Republicans should be talking about. Abortion is, and I, and I say this with all due respect, I have members of my family that are pro-life. Um, I probably the vast majority of people at the church I attend are pro-life. And I personally, uh, you know, feel, uh, I'm not You're happy going, Joe. somebody having an abortion, but I just think it's not, it, the numbers aren't there here in either in Lake County or Lake Forest or in Illinois, statewide in Illinois, maybe in Southern Illinois, but not statewide that, that, that it, you know, if you're pro-life, you're not, God bless you for it, that I respect your, your view. It's a very emotional issue, but you're not going to win an election. And, and so instead the choice becomes, do you want to get a pro um, do you want to get a, a pro-choice Democrat who who raises taxes, or could we at least get a pro-choice Republican who cuts taxes? Right? I mean, Mark Kirk, Bob Dole voted for tax cuts. Bruce Rauner vetoed tax increases that Madigan was trying to get through and would have cut taxes if he'd had a majority in there. But they were pro they were pro-choice on the abortion issue. So, you know, do you want some of what you want, or do you want none of what you want? And that's what we're ended up getting now uh, by by running unelectable Republicans. Joe, I just want the homeless kicked off my lawn, number one. Number two. Are they on your lawn? <laughs> oh, <laughs> not on my lawn. <laughs> but on my lawn. <laughs> the city of Lake yeah. Forest lawn. I, I, you, know, you can thank the ACLU for some of that. I, I, don't I know. Well, you know what? Hey, I'm sure there's a lot of acclues that are out there that would like to come on the show. Please tell us your point of view. And then, you know what? Invite all these people on your front lawn. Joe Weiss, missed you for two weeks, my friend. 
Hopefully, I, I, I may not be on next week. I got. I, I may have a work meeting. I just got a note about it next, oh, next really? week. Oh, really? Okay, but then left. I'm going to try, but I may not. But I, I love being on. I missed it so much, even though I got to take my, you know, I took my son to college and absolutely and all that. So I, but I Drew, yeah. Drew, we miss He'll you. Watch. He'll be watching, man. He's in his dorm <laughs> room watching. <laughs> Drew, Drew, study hard. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. He ain't doing that. He's of course not. Absolutely not. He's just smart. We're going to be working for him one day. Absolutely. <laughs> all right, Joe Weiss. Thank you all for watching and listening to the Lake Forest Podcast. The Lake Forest Podcast is supported by viewers, listeners, and businesses just like you. Looking for the best pool supplies? Look no further than Doheny's Pool Supplies. With a history dating back to 1967, this family-owned business offers everything families need to keep their pools clean and sparkling from chemicals to equipment. Plus, customers enjoy free shipping on all orders. Visit Doheny's Pool Supplies today at doheny.com, D-O-H-E-N-Y.com to learn more. Forest Bluff Real Estate Team serves Illinois, Wisconsin, Lake Forest, and Lake Bluff. John Joseph Fidus, Laura Lee Van Fleet, and of course, Michelle Parnell. Get a free market analysis now at forestbluffrealestate.com. For the best cannabis in the world, look no further than Iliad Epic Grow. Owned by Lake Bluff's own Rich Ruzich, they are a cannabis cultivation center focusing on hard to find small batch products that will delight both the occasional user and Ganjier. When visiting Michigan, ask for it by name, Epic Products, Exceptional Process. For more information, email info at iliadgrow.com. Havy Communications has been helping first responders arrive safely since 1983. It's owned by Lake Forest own Mike Havy. Check them out at havycommunications.com. Are you looking for beer, wings, and swings in Lake Forest? Well, check out Duffer's Pub and their state-of-the-art golf simulators. This primo setup is the perfect place for your next corporate event. Yes, let your boss win. And of course, all the games will be on the TV and you'll never go hungry because the za and wings are scrumptious. Go to Duffer's Pub on Western Avenue now. We'd also like to say we're thankful for Patreon supporters, Otto, John, C, and Helen.